Artificial intelligence is a tool that can be used to uh, compute calculations, to bring information that for a single uh, person or for a group of people will be very difficult to, to reach out to. So it's the ability to leverage uh, computing powers to bring uh, different kinds of data all into one space. So uh, the pedal platform is our, uh, it's a solution that we have that allows um, drug developers to be able to incorporate the a human element, the difference that uh, is natural among different humans earlier in discovery. So what happens is that a drug developer is working on the molecule. They're going to be testing it in different immortalized cell lines. They're going to be do, using different animal models and as close as possible, try to emulate what that tumor environment would be for that particular type of tumors in, in humans. Uh, and then we find, we as an industry, find very good candidates and then we move them into clinical development. And then we go into clinical development and then more often than not, these drugs actually fail. And one of the drivers for that failure is the fact that when it goes into a trial, it is um, in, for example, we're doing um, ovarian cancer, you're going to have for each patient is going to have slightly different combinations of cells and the way that the, the person's body reacts to the drug. And that difference between humans, that difference in, uh, in the tumors was not incorporated into the, into the research earlier on before it was in the clinic. So what we're doing is we're bringing that element, that human element, that human diversity element into the drug discovery, the preclinical stage. And the way we do that is through PEDAL. So PEDAL is the combination of a biobank, uh, and these are actual tumor samples uh, that have been collected over 15 years. Uh, we have about 150,000 covering um, over 130 tumor types. Uh, that have been collected. And these are actual primary patient tumor samples. And they can be used to, to test the drugs. And yes, if you did one, one drug uh, against one, one tumor sample, you can definitely do that in the, in the laboratory and test it and it will be easy. But what we are bringing is the ability for partners to test hundreds of drugs at the same time against hundreds of tumor samples. So to test all of those combinations in the lab would be time prohibited and of course, very expensive. So this is where the AI component comes in. We're able to leverage the ability of computing power to drive what is the testing to be done between different drugs and different tumor samples to be able to predict which are the drugs that are going to work against different tumors, which are the drugs that are actually going to kill the tumors. This is important because we want to be able to take those drugs that are actually effective across different types of tumors uh, into the clinic, uh, just as much as we wanna see which are the ones that are not going to work so that then those are discarded earlier in the, in the, in the process. And um, as an industry, we don't waste money developing things that are not going to be effective when, when they get to the, to the patient. So PEDAL is a, a platform that brings together tumor samples, that brings together artificial intelligence, the, the partners' um, drug uh, molecules that they are working on. And together, we're able to create a prediction of which are the best drugs to move forward in development later for, for the drug partners, drug developer partners. This, um, the platform has, is, as I said, there's, there's a couple of elements, right? There's the bio, the bio bank that we have co been collecting uh, over a, a long period of time. There is the artificial intelligence component that was uh, developed and created by two professors, professors at Carnegie Mellon University. And they have created this artificial intelligence machine learning um, technology to, to leverage this uh, um, uh, biobank. So we have actually done a, a proof of concept study where we took 175 FDA approved drugs. These are commercially available. Um, and uh, 130 different types of ovarian cancer uh, cells. And we were able to run this very large experiment with about 22,000 different combinations of drugs to tumor. And we were able to run this prediction experiment using PEDAL. So what we did was we uh, uh, feed information about different features from the molecules, as well as from the tissues, uh, uh, from the uh, tumor samples. 
into the artificial intelligence core. And it is able to make a prediction of each of the, com each of the combinations of drug and uh, tumor. And it predicts whether it would be a responder or not, or not responder. And this is an iterative process because it makes the first set of predictions, but it says then, all right, these are the set of experiments that will be useful for you to run in the laboratory. So it gives us a dozen or so different experiments that would be useful to run in the lab and know the actual answers of those predictions and be able to then, we run those experiments in the laboratory, we obtain those results, and then we feed it into the artificial intelligence core again. And then with that new information, it is going to be able to make a whole new set of predictions. And then again, it's going to say, okay, these are the ones that I'm less confident in, please run them on the lab. We run those in the lab and then we feed it again. And from, from round to round, there's a lot of changes um, as it's learning more, right? This is machine learning. It's, it's learning from the experiments that were and the new data that we're feeding it. And until eventually the system actually stabilizes and feels comfortable with the predictions that it has made. So of the 22,000 or so different combinations and permutations of drugs and tumors that this uh, experiment would have been able to do, which would have been very time consuming and incredibly expensive. We ended up running only about 3% of those combinations in the lab. And these were all driven by artificial intelligence. And those additional da uh, data points were fed into the system. And with that, it was able to predict an additional 20% of the experimental space. So if you imagine a uh, a, a, a square grid in which on one side you have the drugs and then on the other side you have the, the tumor samples, we were able to have very confident predictions in about very close to 25% um, total of, of the experimental space. Uh, and after this proof of concept was completed, then we wanted to validate the results that we had obtained. And we wanted to validate the re reproducibility of the tests that we had done in the laboratory. And we wanted to validate the accuracy with which the artificial intelligence had predicted the responses. And we were able to find that with 92% accuracy, the AI had actually made the right predictions about drug response to tumor samples and lack of response from different tumor samples. So we are incredibly um, enthusiastic and excited about, these are very promising results. Uh, and now we are in, uh, in a stage of commercializing and looking for the right partners to be able to work with their oncology uh, programs to test the molecules that they're looking to develop so that we can give them that insight into what the human element, that this human variability and differences would look like uh, later on in clinical development when they test it in a preclinical stage. Mm -hmm.